Well, hello. This is uh, Dr. Odom here. Um, I'm recording these conservation genetics lectures because our normal population genetics lecturer, Dr. Nigel Austin, has um, left us. Um, so I'm standing in for him at the moment. So this lecture was prepared by uh, Dr. Austin and I'm really just modifying it a little bit and going through it. So at the end of these lectures, hopefully what we should uh, have imparted to you is the importance and role of genetic diversity to the survival and evolutions of populations of species, particularly those that we want to conserve. You should know what the Hardy-Weinberg principle is, and you should be able to uh, use that principle to, to discern whether populations are sustainable in a genetic sense, they're evolving, or whether they're prone to extinction. You should be able to identify the major evolutionary forces acting on populations, and you'll understand the importance of populations and considering conservation in terms of populations. And you should be able to discuss the factors that contribute to an extinction vortex, uh, particularly in genetic terms, and provide solutions to mitigate them. Now I'm going to go through this lecture in a series of shorter podcasts. I'm going to try and break it up so you don't have to sit through a two-hour lecture. Um, I'm going to try and break it up into things which are no more than 20, 25 minutes long. So I'll be going through five um, shorter sub-lectures. First one, Christ, the extinction crisis and background to conservation genetics. The second deals with genetic diversity and Hardy Weinberg. The third looks at changes in population genetic diversity, so how uh, population genetic diversity changes. Uh, well, and that's quite important when it come when we talk about conservation of small populations and also evolution. Um, we'll take a look at effective population size and the difference between uh, the actual population size in terms of individuals and the effective population size. And finally, we'll take a look at the problem with inbreeding in small populations, which is quite important when we are trying to conserve. Um, different rare species around the world. So the first lecture is looking at the extinction crisis and backgrounds to conservation genetics. So this one is really just to pull everybody together and remind them on what conservation genetics is, sorry, what genetics is, some of the different terms in genetics and basically trying to get you to understand why they are important in conservation. So, what is conservation genetics? So, conservation genetics is the application of genetic principles and techniques to better conserve species as a dynamic evolutionary entity in order to minimize their risk of extinction. So, conservation genetics is using genetic principles to understand the problems in conservation. And as you'll see, uh, genetics is quite often at the heart of the reason why some species will begin to go extinct. So we really do need to understand genetics and why, uh, to understand why uh, species are at risk of extinction. So You've probably all done this, um, speciation and extinction, uh, why, how speciation occurs, why it occurs, and why extinction occurs, um, particularly if you've done evolution and biosystematics. Uh, if you haven't, then this is probably new to you, so uh, I suggest that you do read up in the conservation textbook which um, I will give you the page numbers later on uh, in the series of lectures. But you can take a look in there and refresh your memories if you've done it before and uh, catch up 
to speed and the knowledge uh, if you have it. But the main point that I want to get across here is that species um, have a life cycle. They evolve, they persist in through time, and then they go extinct. Pretty much all species, or 90% of the species which have existed on Earth, are now extinct. So species don't last forever. They will eventually go extinct. Um, you need to understand or try to remember some of the ways in which species arise um, because that's important because genetics plays quite a big role in uh, the evolution of species as well as when they approach extinction. Um, we've got a couple of different ways in which uh, species evolve and they are the um, allopatric method where a single population is divided by some means and those two different populations become reproductively isolated and that means they no longer exchange genetic material and therefore they will tend to diverge from one another and they will become eventually different species. This is different to um, sympatric speciation where a single population throws up a mutation which in some way makes it reproductively isolated from its surrounding fellows and that individual gives rise to a new population which is reproductively isolated and therefore uh, starts up a new population in the same place as the old population. So mechanisms by which a individual can become genetically isolated from its surrounding individuals is through uh, tetraploidy. In other words, the genetic material becomes doubled, which makes it only compatible with other tetraploids and not uh, compatible with diploids, for instance. And in that way, they, uh, individuals with the tetraploidy become genetically isolated and effectively become new species. And with time, they change because they can no longer exchange genes. Eventually, these new species will be lost and you'll get extinction. So, for instance, um, we would get um, in the horse line. Horses um, evolve from the horse ancestors and uh, other cousin genera or taxa would evolve into different types of horses like the mountain zebra, the quagga and the plain zebra. The horse, the mountain zebra and the plain zebra are still with us but the quagga has gone extinct. Okay, that may be through overhunting or it just may be through changes in environmental uh, conditions. So humans <clears throat> are not necessarily uh, what the cause of extinction. It may be some sort of change of in environment. The species becomes too specialized and environment changes and it goes extinct naturally without interference from humans. So extinction is happening all the time. And if you look at the fossil record, there are periods where extinction has outstripped evolution. Usually extinction just about balances evolution, and there may be just a slight increase in the number of species through the fossil record. But there are periods where extinction massively outstripped evolution, and there was a great decline in uh, species. There are, these are known as mass extinction events and there have been uh, four or five, there have been five up until now at different periods in the fossil record so we can see 
these are areas where fossils suddenly disappeared from the fossil record and large numbers of them and we know that that was a mass extinction event. Six extinction. All right, so that's, this is when the dinosaurs uh, went extinct and mammals and birds began to uh, increase in number and dominate. Our present extinction rate at the this moment in time is the reason why you are sitting through this conservation biology lecture. There is an extinction, mass extinction event going on at the moment and it's probably all down to humans and how humans are changing environments and ecosystems all around the world at a speed which is much faster than uh, different species can cope with. So our present extinction rate is uh, far higher than the origin of new species, so the evolution rate, and it's also far higher than the normal background extinction rate. So that means we're losing species around the world. You've you heard about this in your extinction lecture, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. How does genetics fit into this? This is really what we want to talk about in this lecture. And we need to understand the idea of a concept, uh, extinction vortex um, if we are to understand the role of genetic diversity and conservation genetics in the extinction brain. So basically what uh, the extinction vortex is basically a downward spiral of species towards extinction. So as a species um, becomes rare, it loses numbers. It becomes rare, first of all, because of human impacts, habitat loss, pollution, over-exploitation, and so on. But as it loses uh, numbers and it becomes rare, population becomes small, genetic factors begin to kick in. You get a loss of genetic diversity, and much of these lectures are talking about how genetic diversity is lost. And those, that loss of genetic diversity is exacerbated by inbreeding and outbreeding de depression, which causes a further loss in the numbers, which then exacerbates genetic diversity loss and inbreeding. And eventually that brings the numbers of species to a low enough uh, level that demographic instability results and environmental and catastrophic or stochastic events can cause a complete wipeout of that species. So this loss of genetic diversity can lead to a downward spiral. So you would have a small population inbreeding and genetic drift leads to lo loss of genetic variability which leads to a reduction in individual fitness and adapt adaptation ability of the population, which leads to lower reproduction and higher mortality, which leads to a smaller population again, which again leads to inbreeding and genetic drift. And in that way, the population of this rare species begins to decrease and decrease, and uh, the pressures are not relieved and eventually that population shrinks to zero and the population and the species is no more and we have an extinction. So how can conservation genetic help? By basically concentrating on those genetic factors which further reduce the population size and drive the species down on that extinction vortex. If we can manipulate or change the conservation genetics, we can arrest that decline. We can also use conservation genetics to identify populations which may be at risk due to genetic diversity. So, for instance, the cheetahs, in, which is that big cat in Africa, the one that runs very fast, 
that actually has really low genetic diversity. So we need to be very careful in conserving the cheetah because it is at a stage where if the environment changes it's not likely to be able to adapt to the changing environment. We can also use genetic means to determine effective population sizes which are not going to be genetically prone to uh, decreasing the amount of reproductive ability of the population or the species as a whole. So we can take a look at the genetic variability and we can determine whether that population size for that particular species is high enough. We can understand how fragmented populations uh, must be connected across the landscape to try and maintain that effective population size. We can also use genetics to understand whether uh, different populations interbreed with one another or whether they're actually separated and therefore they may actually be considered different species. So even if they have the opportunity to breed with one another, they don't, then we must consider the possibility that those two different populations, even though they look the same, they may actually be different species. We can define management units for conservation. So we can say, okay, this population is able to maintain its own genetic diversity, so we can treat this as a management unit. However, these three smaller populations must be considered together, and we must maintain immigration between them if they are to survive uh, as populations. So all of these things are very important and can help in conservation. So in summary for this first little uh, podcast, species evolve by different means and species have a life cycle. They will evolve, they will persist, and eventually they will go extinct. Extinction is a natural process, it is always occurring, but currently it is far above the normal rate, mainly due to human changes in the environment. An extinction vortex occurs when a species lose too many individuals and only exist in small populations. And conservation genetics can help us understand why or if those small populations can survive or whether they will cause a reduction in reproduction and therefore a de further decrease in the population and drive that population and that species down into an extinction vortex. Okay, so that's the first uh, video in the conservation genetics. Um, we are going to now, I'll leave that one there and then I will come back for the next video, which is what is genetic? biodiversity.